There was a time once when you knew you'd walked into the wrong pub. When you uh, asked the question, are you a Fenian? I know the answer to this question. The answer is, yes, I am a Fenian. I can, it's like, there's, there's some things about you, yourself that you can't really back away from. And that'd be, uh, yeah, Fenian. What does Fenian mean? Well, it's, a, it's like a, a derogatory term for Irish scum, Catholic Irish scum, revolutionary Catholic Irish scum. Currently in, still in wide use in places like Scotland. If you support Celtic FC, you're invariably a Fenian. A person of Irish descent. See, when I was coming up, there was a, a very serious war being fought. A rebellion in Britain against the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. And it's taken me a lot of years to realise it, but it's like I was steeped in the tradition and was being groomed to certainly be a sympathiser of theirs my entire life. Or up until they decided they no longer existed, when the, the troubles came to an end and we pretended things like the Irish gangland no longer existed. Everybody got a pass, everybody got a pardon. And we just carried on as if such things never happened or do not exist. And it's like, okay, so all that shit they taught us, all that stuff I was taught at school, whereas I was educated to be a, a sectarian. Protestant versus Catholic. Fights would break out between gangs of youths from schools I went to. Catholics against Protestants. I'd, every now and then, I'd face a beating for being, just being a Catholic. And that was something that was real because at the same time, you had a lot of people in a lot of positions who were very sympathetic towards the Northern Irish cause and very much at war within themselves against the Thatcher government who'd put a hell of a lot of people out of work. And the thing is, with that sympathy, it's a matter of they don't really know the, who, who they're dealing with. They don't know who they're propping up. They don't know who they're enabling. And they're enabling the, the, the worst criminal scumbags in the world. You, they're enabling the grooming of children to one day be soldiers and supporters of this great cause. And then they've been, they've been fighting this war of assassins, which is what it was, for a good hundred years on and off. And were to suddenly believe that it just came to an end when some treaty was signed with Tony Blair. Looks an awful lot like me, you know. That the Labour Party just uh, decided to uh, retire its paramilitary wing. Where its paramilitary wing. It's like, who had the ability to turn that struggle off? Oh, the Labour Party, as soon as they got Thatcher out of power, done deal, everyone gets a pardon, all the prisoners are released. Never to speak of the troubles ever again. All fades into memory. How fucking useful for everyone involved in that little Cold War. I remember when they blew Manchester, fuck. I was only 10 miles away, so 10, 15 miles away, so, you know, I heard the blast, felt it. The blue Manchester to fuck, smash the fuck out of Dean's Gate. I'll backside at Arndale to look at it now, you'd never know that it was blown up with a huge bomb. All replaced. For miles around, every pane of glass shattered. What a sight that was. It's like... We in this country faced a deadly terrorist threat. Really serious 
um, networks of people gathering information, doing things behind the scenes, but at the same time be hand in hand with Marxists who you would use the same everything. It's like fundamentally that was a big problem with the, the IRA is that the IRA were Marxists too. They were communists too. They were hand in hand with, with, with communist lefty forces in the UK. And to my mind, it's like they, how could they not have infiltrated every facet of our government? How could they not have ended up owning a political party or two? Bearing in mind that they were trading in murderous force, dangerous criminals, threats that manifested into dead bodies. I think they took over, personally. I think those forces all combined and and worked together towards similar ends of all getting rich from their new positions of uh, new networks they'd managed to create in the peacetime. The Labour Party found new criminal parties, new criminal partners, changed tactics. But that rebellion, that network that had been built over. 50 years, those kids that have been groomed straight out of school to become soldiers in the IRA. Where did they go? I'll put it to you because I think rebellion is, is, is close in this country. When you look at the ULS things, I don't think that the government, I don't think they've learned any lessons from the Irish, you know, the Irish were far more deadly an enemy than Al Qaeda ever were, and they used to put this country on extreme terror alert, take all the police off the streets and use them to guard all the infrastructure instead. Hello, I'm being robbed. Can you come and help me? No, we're on high terror alert. They didn't do it. They didn't scratch the sur Islamic extremists. Never scratched the surface in this country, really, compared to what the IRA did in the past. And we didn't shut anything down or change any laws drastically to deal with them. But again, a cat and mouse being pillared 24 hours a day, a, a, a war of assassins against a deadly enemy that really wants to put you to the sword. Doesn't want you dead, he wants to torture you and wants to hurt you and he wants to do psychological damage to you. Bit like Extinction Rebellion, but with better tactics, more effective tactics and better, let's say, target identification. Is the IRA not beyond killing? It's something yesterday in the old Guardian, so it was there definitely meant to be read. They reported on raids in Northern Ireland, on gangs who'd been, um, let's say, active in the last week or two, throwing petrol bombs, policemen ending up in hospital and the like. Raided their homes and found grenades. Grenades that should be on the front line in Ukraine. They were Ukrainian munitions. They were of Russian manufacturer, but they've traced the weapons down and they should have been on the front in Ukraine. So it's like, what, military grade weapons ending up in the hands of Irish gangs? Yes, where have we heard of this before? I've put it out before as to say, do we really know that the IRA were disarmed at the end of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, they handed over all the weapons. Like, how would anyone... How could anyone possibly know? Well, they said they did. So how could anyone possibly know if they did? They raided these guys out. They found explosives, machine pistols, grenades. It's like... You know how much mayhem you could cause with a grenade in the right place? A grenade, one grenade. Just be smart about where you were to put it. Like built-in, a built-in piece of, a built-in 
trigger that makes it so it's a, a, the most adaptable booby trap. Part of why they're made the way they are. Highly adaptable to be converted right now into a booby trap of, uh, uh, and you can be really creative for how you use a grenade. And they've got grenades. I was listening to a, uh, it called Neil Oliver, and he's been talking about that we need a revolution. I'm like, no, revolution, no. It's like you, you, you're being a fantasist. It's like, what you're going to see is a rebellion. It's like <sighs> underground types, criminal types, gang types, politicized gang types, they've not gone anywhere. And they suffer too. When people start to suffer, when people start to get squeezed, they suffer too. You see the start of it with that ULS campaign thing as to where they, they've made a game of it. And there's a few different games that can be played when you decided to go into rebellion against your government. I wouldn't be all that surprised. I'm not making a suggestion if like idiots who are on that Welsh assembly don't find themselves afraid of being killed. Seriously. Uh, S Scottish government officials not being afraid of being assassinated. Whom by? By their own criminal elements. And then, you see, I bring this together and I'm talking this way because in the last two nights there's been two attacks on the Russian fleet at port in Sevastopol. And it, the, the Ukrainians, the Ukraine are, are, are claiming quite a victory. They're claiming to have destroyed Russia's uh, defence capability, as well as having hit quite a few of the ships. So that place is now defenceless from air assault, and they intend to smash it with long-range weapons. And right at the front of this story is uh, attack carried out with UK built cruise missiles that we given them and there hasn't just been one attack there's been two attacks they softened them up two nights ago and then hit them again hard last night with British cruise missiles so call me a, a big thinking fantasist fool but I put these two things together as the forces in this country, let's call them like the Fremen, <laughs> the, the people that we pretend don't exist, they don't pay any tax, they don't sign any uh, documents, they don't, they're, 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 they're off the grid, they're out of the ordinary, they're doing their own thing, they could be seen to be doing all right, but really they're right on the edge of society, they're on the line between the legal and the illegal and they operate by a different set of rules than everyone else and know that there's a lot of these people a hell of a lot of people who've been cut off discarded by society and not represented by any political party at all and are people who find themselves in conflict with the government the police the courts the system there are people like that many people like that and they have kids too often lots of them it's funny how that goes hand in hand and you've hit the Russians twice in two nights and they're thinking we should take some kind of retribution here we should strike against Britain well we could just take out the Thalwell viaduct and the M1 with conventional missiles destroy the two biggest and most important motorway bridges. That would be the end of their country, would cut the thing in half. Uh, the, they would have far bigger problems immediately to worry about than messing with our business. We could teach them a lesson. Yeah, but that'd be a military attack and that'd be a direct action. That would be an open declaration of war and that would lead to 
probably nuclear annihilation. So maybe we should, even though that's what they fucking deserve, to send them a few missiles back in kind and test out their air defences. Maybe that's what they deserve, but maybe that's not what's available to us. What's available to us, Dr. Strangelove? And, you know, they, they, they send for me. My, my thing is, I always I think of myself as like the nuclear general. You know, like when, when it's like DEFCON, <laughs> you know, DEFCON 1, and it's declared, it's like, okay, we need a strategy for us how to win in this crisis. Send for Dr. Strangelove. I'd like to be Dr. Strangelove, that last resort guy. But I say in Russia, it's like, here, you, you, you know, you get to just stay at home all day if that's who you are. But in Russia, you know, they might find a job for you. So Russia calls it, he calls in Dr. Strangelove and he asks Dr. Strangelove, right, it's like, what, what do we do here? And I tell him, well, they've not attacked us directly. They've attacked us indirectly. So the right thing to do in kind is to attack them indirectly. So it's like a cyber attack? No. Sabotage of infrastructure? No. What then? Let's fund and arm all these little groups of idiots, shall we? Let's use our networks to start some trouble. Maybe kill a few people. And it won't have been us who did it because it's a matter of Money, an incredible incentive these days when there's so little of it around. We can just spread money around and we can cause an incredible amount of trouble. Bet your ass that there's Russian illegals in this country. Agents who would generally be criminals but cunts for hire that would be available to the Russians to do sabotage. But I think sabotage is the wrong Tactic. I think the right tactic is targeted assassination. I think it's to do murder. I think to do murder most horrid in the day of the in the, in the times of the internet is definitely the right strategy if you want to and and do it indirectly. Make it look like the Islamists did it. Make it look like the Irish did it. Make it look like the right wing did it. Make it look like the... As long as you know it gets done and it, it terrorises people and it, and it sends a message to that political class in that country that they'll understand when they receive it that they cannot hide from us and we're in every country in the world and they'll never be safe. And Putin says to me, you mean the KGB way of doing things? And I'm like, exactly the KGB way of doing things. Oh, so you mean you think we should do what we systematically would do anyway, but just turn on the green light? Yes. You are having a laugh if you think this country isn't absolutely fucking full of people who can be bought and paid for like that, who hate the government enough, and if you were to pay them to do dirty deeds, they'd do them pretty damn dirt cheap. When a million is not a big bounty to put on someone's head when you consider the price of nuclear war. I think they'll put price on people's heads. I think, they'll, I think the Russians are, are in a position where the best course of action is... For them to create incentives for rebellious citizens of the United Kingdom to strike against their leadership. Can't see past it. It's like, that's always a danger that that might happen anyway. It'd be grassroots, but it hasn't happened yet. And I'm always thinking that we're only ever a couple of months away from uh, Extinction Rebellion uh, deciding to toss away the non-violence and, and reach for violence or others using the technique but with violence because it, they are terrorists they use terrorist tactics i've been waiting for someone to reach for violence and I'm like this is what it's going to come to it'll come to murdering because that's all you've given people left to do and you've given them the internet as well as to whether the 
word of the deadly deed is going to go around the world in seconds and shock everybody and be a global thing. Like, that's the only way. Now, you've incentivized the Russians to facilitate that kind of act. It's like, if there's any Russian uh, oligarchs watching, just send me a load of money to my PayPal. Send me enough money so I can retire to my PayPal and I'll just delete this video and never speak of it again. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs to eat. <laughs>